Yeah. Are you with RT soccer correspondent Tony O'Donoghue? Tony, looking forward to the start of the new season? I am indeed, and uh, I think finally we may have turned a corner in terms of uh, all the negativity surrounding the league. It's great to have a, a new title sponsor today, and even though there's been issues with Derry City, well documented, and, and Cork City, uh, well, I would hope that we're, we're finished with a lot of the negativity. It's been a, a traumatic time for clubs, the salary, wage cap and whatever. Obviously clubs were, were living beyond their means, uh, but there's been quite a shake-up in the league in a lot of clubs. I think clubs have been a bit more prudent with their budgets now. And uh, even though it's been a difficult couple of years, uh, hopefully, hopefully the lessons have been learned. You must be still saddened now by the, the situations at Cork and Derry. Well, at Cork in particular, I suppose, because uh, I'm from there and, you know, I, I grew up watching Cork Hibs and Cork Celtic and at the time they used to draw massive crowds to not just Turner's Cross but Flower Lodge as well. Like, everyone said, I remember Ireland played an international match there and uh, it was one of the best surfaces in Europe uh, and that went out of soccer completely. It's now a parky ring, a, a GAA ground. Uh, since then, you know, there's been... So many Cork clubs, Cork Alberts, uh, Evergreen, Fordsons. Uh, when Cork City came along in 1984, I thought there would be stability. It had to spend a long time in, in building a, an image for itself and, and, and growing a history and a tradition. And you don't just you know, pull history and tradition out of the air. You have to go through your struggles as a club, winning your first tournament, getting the fans on your side, bringing, you know, bringing out a lot of great players and, and legends. And that works for every club. And with Cork and, and me, I, just, I, I loved seeing Patsy Frain or Pat Morley or Dave Barry or players like this. Uh, and their exploits in Europe and their finally their success in winning a league and whatever. And all that after 25 years in existence has been thrown away and thrown away so lightly it seems. You know, we had all these court cases, uh, all the negativity and the people that wanted to take over the club not being allowed to. Uh, eventually the licensing committee, and I don't blame them, uh, not awarding a Premier Division licence, not awarding any licence to Cork in the end. Uh, but it was a sad, sad moment when the club that I love uh, went out of business. The supporters for us now have an opportunity. Uh, they'll be playing at Turner's Cross. They're, I was just speaking to them there. They're, they're trying desperately hard to get a strip, to get players. They've got a manager trying to get sponsors. It's a, it's a new world and a difficult world for them ahead. They'll be in the first division. But funnily enough, it could make the first division an interesting one. Derry being in it as well. That's a big game straight away. Derry and Cork. Shelburne are in it. Wexford Utes are in it. Waterford are in it. Uh, Merriview. You know, there's, there's a great spread. And I think it'll make the First Division interesting this season, that's for sure. As I said, a lot of the teams that are usual Premier Division teams are now in the First Division with the likes of Shells, Cork and Derry. I think that maybe runs the danger of the Premier Division getting a bit boring? Mm, I think the First Division, have, uh, like over the last two seasons of m they were always giving out that there wasn't First Division, that there's a limit to how many cameras m can have, how many games they can cover and whatever. But certain games, like you know, Cork and Waterford, uh, Derry games... Uh, they will demand attention now because I think you'll find bigger crowds perhaps at those games than uh, a UCD Sporting Fingal game, just as, a, as an example. Um, so maybe it evens it out because it is a national league. It's the Electricity League of Ireland now. It's, a, it's not the Electricity Premier Division. And um, we might see that there's more coverage across the league. Uh, as regards the Premier Division, well, it's still the top dogs, but I, I don't think that many clubs in the Premier can actually set out with a hope of winning it. I think, obviously, Bohemians may be the, the, the short price favourites to, to retain their title again. Uh, Shamrock Rovers are stable and uh, got a very good manager in a great stadium, so they'll be um, definitely pushing hard, I'd say, this season, very hard, to win a trophy. Uh, Dundalk seem to have, have bought well, and, and Ian Foster have a, a very good young manager. Um, so maybe you know a handful of clubs can actually hope to win the Premier this season. I think for a lot of others, like Bray, who went in late, uh, UCD, although they play very good football, I don't see them having the resources to sustain a title challenge. Um, Sporting Fingal, of course, did so well winning the FAI Cup last season. Got a very good manager, got a very experienced uh, group of players. So maybe they might feature in the in, in the top four if they get a get their act together, and I, I feel certain they will. There's a lot of young players around the league. Who do you think are the ones to watch this season? 
Well, I haven't even looked at, at the squad so far in, in, in that detail because, you know, I was talking to Eddie Gormley last night, the Bray Wanderers manager, for example. He's still trying to, to finalise uh, his squad and get players in if, if they're out of contract and, and what have you. So we'll only sit down from, from today, really, and look at the squads and, 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 and study that a bit more and, and see. But there's been fantastic talent over the last number of seasons. Uh, I'm a fan of summer soccer because I believe technically it improves our players. I think players are fitter. Uh, players are technically better able to, 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 to play the game and I think results have, have shown in Europe in particular that we're, we're able to cope uh, favourably with, with, with professional leagues across Europe and uh, it's good to see our young players going across to England for example and uh, having played in the league here obviously the likes of Seamus Coleman, Niall McGinn, uh, even Brian Murphy of course and, 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 and performing well and, and getting into to, to big teams, big professional teams. So I would hope that it can be a young players league and it can be a developmental stage to them having a full-time professional career. Uh, ideally I would like the league to, to grow and improve over the next number of seasons now and be stable uh, and maybe one day be truly fully professional and sustainable in the future. So Tony, Tony when the end of the season comes what will you be hoping to look back on? Goals, games, drama, excitement, not high courts, not asterisks for, for points deductions, uh, not scandals about betting or anything negative like that. I just want the, the league to develop new stars, new young players who will burst onto the Irish consciousness and will become well-known heroes because of their playing exploits in what I hope will be a, a stable and exciting league. Thanks a lot, Tony. You're very welcome. Cheers.